everyone. It's Suzanne, and I want to thank you for joining us for our So Susie podcast, where we'll be exploring and demystifying some of the crafting world's greatest mysteries. You will also be able to get the show notes and the links we reference by visiting us at www.sosusiepodcast.com. Do you ever get excited about someone in our amazing creative industry? You see a project they create, a video, or something new, and you get all excited. Well, today, I get to interview one of my favorite creative icons. The first time I remember seeing something that blew my mind was on Pinterest with a very Harry Potter-esque Hermione with a green glowing orb. I was in total awe. How did this person do that? It looked so real. I thought maybe it was glowing because she put that glow-in-the-dark paint on her picture. So I clicked through the image to find the board for Kitten Clowder. There is nothing that prepared me for the amazingness that is Elise Keegan and her incredible talent for coloring. I was completely mesmerized and couldn't stop looking at her pictures. I mean, who colors like this? I admit that I was completely intimidated by her skill and talent and put her in this can't touch this category when it came to epic badassery. Now, it never fails. When you find something you totally fall in love with, you see it everywhere. I had no clue what a Copic marker was. No idea why it was so special or the kind of power it would have in the world of card makers. When push came to shove and Kaimona, my most powerful of influencers, told me that I had to try Copics, how could I not check out Kitten Clowder and sign up for her monthly classes? for both markers and pencils, because it's me and I can't not to do both. My first class was back in August of 2015, and it was this beautiful ice princess scene. I just about died. I mean, what? I can barely color in the lines. But I printed it off. I worked on it slowly, very slowly, over the course of a few months. I practiced blending, flicking, worked my colors, and then January rolled out and her beach scene came out. I thought, you know what? I can do this. It's time to stop procrastinating. Stop being afraid and intimidated. I grabbed out a couple of the beach stamps I had. I watched her video. And do you know what? I created my very first scene. And it looked pretty darn good for someone who wasn't all that confident in her coloring abilities. And the best part was, everything I read watched and listened to encourage me to keep going, to try and don't stop. It may not look good right now, but wait until it all comes together and it will amaze you the wonderful things you can accomplish. The magic that can happen. And that magic, which started with a green glowing orb on Pinterest, led itself to Miss Elise Keegan from Kitten Clowder, who I have the amazing privilege of having on the show today. Elise, thank you so much for being our Made It Happen Monday guest. Thank you so much. Wow, that was such a beautiful thing that you just said. That means so much to me. When did you first find your love for coloring? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't even know how long ago it was now, but I actually bought my first Copic markers for a uni assignment in my final year. My tutor actually encouraged me to go and buy them, and she thought that it would be the best thing for me to do to finish my assignment. So I got them. I failed at them. I did terribly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I so put bad them now? back in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> I put them back in the cupboard and said, I don't have time to do this right now because my – I'm going to fail my uni assignment if I keep trying to learn something that's this hard. So I put them back in the cupboard. I did my assignment on the computer and that was that. And I think it was a, a couple of months after I graduated and I found them again and I thought, oh my gosh, these things cost me so much money. What can I do with these now that I'm not in uni anymore? And I Googled it and found someone had colored up the greeting farm stamps and they'd color them up with their Copics. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cute. And I, I want to do this. I think I can do this. I'll try really hard. I'm going to practice and I'm going to do this. So I got them out and I practiced like anything. (laughs) I literally, in in the time that I was learning to color, I think I practiced every single day for probably about three years. 
So I have put in a lot of practice there, and that was before we sort of started on a class side. So I was just a card maker and blogger just like everyone else and, and just trying to learn things myself. But I loved it. I love – the thing that I love the most about coloring – is you can sit down for two or three hours and you've made an art piece that you can be really proud of. And every time that you pick up your markers or your pencils and you try again, there's new things to learn and there's new achievements that you can be had with it. And now how did that inspire you to start Kitten Clowder? Uh, the way that it started as a as an online class business is I actually started teaching at a live store. So I was doing that for a few years and every weekend I'd go in and show them sort of how to do the techniques and basically do what we do now and I'd make a video so they could practice at home because that's one of the things I think doing live is we don't have that ability to press pause or rewind and rewatch things again. So I was doing that for the live classes and then still sharing what I made, I guess, with our blog followers and everything then. And by that time I was sort of on a few design teams and, and I guess getting my blog out there a little bit more through challenges and everything like that. And because we had so many international members, a lot of people overseas were like, they can't come to the live class. So can I teach what I was teaching live to them online? Because I was doing things like a skin and hair class in the store, but not online. So they said, can you do this? So one year I thought, okay, let's, it was about three years ago. And I was like, I'm going to make this skin and hair class and we'll see how it goes. Maybe we can sell 50 in a year or something and then it'll be worth all this hard work (laughs) so it took me about three or four months to make this class there's if if you've ever done our classes before you know they're not little so I always put in a lot of effort to content and really making sure you'll have everything you need so three or four months later I'd made this class and um I think that week alone we'd sort of already got to about a thousand members in our group and it had just snowballed so I never ever knew or thought it would grow from there but it has grown quite massively since then which is very exciting. Now you recently wrote a blog post about the benefits of taking a class even if you have a lot going on. Why is that? I think that's a really important thing and it's something that we forget. We've got a lot of members in our community that go through all different things in life, such as illness or loss or even just being overwhelmed with having kids and having a full-time job or doing things like that as well. And it hinders our ability to feel creative. And I think when we feel overwhelmed in life, typically the first thing that we can take it out on is ourselves and our opportunities to be creative. I think we can tend to feel a bit guilty to spend time on things like coloring or it just doesn't seem as important in your list of priorities to do in a week. And I think that what's really important to remember is that being creative and having a way to express your feelings about what's going on around you is a really therapeutic and calming thing to do. And like I mentioned before, when you do a coloring or when you learn something new, you get that sense of achievement and you get that accomplishment and order back in your life when everything feels very hectic. And so I think what's good about doing a class is you can basically sit down, you've got instruction there, you're taking away the chaos and not knowing what to do and everything and you can just follow along and create a beautiful artwork that you can be very proud of while knowing that you're learning a lot of skills to help with all of your different images as well. And that's why I wanted to remind everyone that it is important to take that time out for you, even if it's just 15 minutes in a big, long week, 15 minutes to have that sense of order, to have that creativity, and even to have a little bit of social time because you can join in with others and share your work and chat on other people's work as well. And that sort of thing really can help with your overall well-being and how you feel about your week as well. So that's why I really wanted to do a post like that because I do think we forget uh, as busy people in a busy society to actually put that time aside for hobbies because they are so important. One of the things I find most fascinating about Kit and Clowder is that you do more than just teach people how to color you are actually recognized as an art therapy business. Now, what is art therapy and why do you feel it is so important? So I actually got 
verify it. I actually did a diploma in art therapy after starting Kid and Clouder. And the main reason I did this, so Kid and Clouder is not just, we don't just teach online colouring classes. So we've got a really big Facebook community where everyone gets together and they comment on each other's work, they share each other's work, but they also share about their lives. And I guess being a part of this community with everyone, I've come to learn that there's a lot of people that are going through different things. So there's a lot of people who are dealing with illness and coming into a group like Kid and Clouder might be the only time that they get a chance to socialize with others or do something creative like that in their day. And we've got a lot of people going through loss, lack of confidence. I see that a lot, a lot of things like this. And so because I chat with everyone about it, I realized it was such an important thing. And that's why I went out and got my diploma of art therapy so that I was better equipped to be able to help people with things like this. So art therapy is actually when we combine art with the techniques to help with expressing how we feel. So it's putting those emotions behind being stuck in bed or feeling ill or dealing with loss through our art and we can channel that and it helps to give a deeper understanding of ourselves and how we're reacting to what goes on around us. So it's not about focusing on the finished product or getting something that's perfect but it's about that process of creating and experiencing and learning and what it does is it helps to encourage relaxation and letting go of our problems and again having that achievement and thing that we can work on. So I think that um, with that, I think that the art therapy is very important part of it because we can actually have a little bit more confidence with our work as well. So we actually do, we're going to be doing this a lot more at Kid and Cloud Up because it sort of existed as more of a support role, I guess, is, is me being there for everyone. And we do have a Mindful Me class, which is a freebie in our classrooms if you pop on our website. When that goes through the basics of what art therapy is and how to gain back a little bit more confidence through our work as well. But my uh, hope this year is to actually bring a lot more art therapy-based classes to Kid and Clouder. So we're not just focusing on creating a finished product and having perfect colouring, but we're actually trying to inject in our new classes coming out and in what we do now already, that it's not about being perfect. It's about enjoying the colouring focusing on the strokes and the color that you're laying down the page and letting what's happening in your world sort of wash away and take a second, I guess, take second priority. It sits in the back of your mind because we're just focusing on the coloring. So even in the classes that we do now, so um, you mentioned before, we're doing our monthly coloring class, which is basically like doing a project together. I don't want to focus on having people focus on being perfect. I don't want people to focus on If it's not perfect or it doesn't look like mine, then they've failed because that's not what colouring is about. We all have our unique styles and we all have different levels of practice. And so when we're doing the classes, I try to remind everyone throughout the process that it's not about getting your colouring to look like mine because, as I mentioned right at the start, I sat down every day for three years colouring. So I have a lot more practice than someone else, but it doesn't mean that I'm more naturally talented and I'm going to be better than anyone else. It just means that I've put in that hard work first and now it's your turn to put in that work with me and I'll give you as much support and everything as you need to help grow your journey. So that's why I wanted to inject the art therapy because I really believe that everyone can do this. They just need to believe in themselves to have a go and to um, be confident with their work and know that we're working on I guess, dealing with everyday life as well as the coloring, using the coloring to help us with that. And I saw just before we got onto the interview, I was on Facebook and um, one of your posts popped up in my feed and it was you really encouraging people and, and, and making sure that they understand that you're available for that for that one-on-one conversation about their projects. And you do. I mean, we're you know, I'll be on Facebook and seeing the feeds and the threads. And it's so nice how often you are in there commenting, whether it's on somebody's project or, you know, a thought that they have, um, you know, the, the little chit chat back and forth. And is that a piece of, you know, the, the art therapy and one of those benefits that you offer? I think it's, it's the most important thing to me. I'm not here to just sell a product on how to color and then leave. 
mm-hmm. it's I feel that what Kid and Clowder is about is it's about community and it's about family and feeling like you belong and feeling like you can do this. And I, as I mentioned before, I don't really feel that any one person is better than another. I feel that we've all got different levels of practice. And that's why I just want everyone to feel really included. And I know what it's like. One of the best things about coloring and and why I started in the first place is you can create something you're proud of and then you can share it with the the crafting community and one person can go in and say wow I really love what you've done here and you've done this this and this which looks beautiful and that is the best feeling that is the best feeling to be able to create something and someone loves what you've created because when you put up a photo, you don't see all the hard work and the experiments and the practice and everything behind it. You just see a finished result. And behind every photo is tons of practice and tons of hard work there. So when you share your work, just getting those comments and likes is such an important part and such a wonderful part of this hobby. And I think we've got the ability to be able to do that at Kid and Clowder. And that's why it's so important for me that everyone knows that I think they're doing a, a wonderful job. And, and again, that I am available and I am there um, with our classes as well. I do one-on-one private tutoring in the classes with everyone. And that's just available whether they choose to use it or not, or they choose to private message me rather than use the classroom. Um, but I am there. It's not just you do your coloring and you go. It's if you do your coloring and this is hard, and you're struggling and you don't think you can do it, send a message because the best way to get help is to ask for it. And I'm not just interested in selling you a class and having you figure it out. I'm interested in working together so that we can help you feel most confident. And that's what it's about. Now, you have won a slew of achievements in the last few years. Out of all of the awards and recognition, What are you most proud of when it comes to what you've done for the industry? What keeps you going every month? I think the most important thing for me is probably not any of the awards or anything, although I'm very grateful to have been so lucky. Uh, But the thing that I'm most proud of is our community. It's the way people support one another. It's, It's all of that feeling involved and people coming in and sharing what they're working on or sharing just about their day. And I remember I had a really hard time a couple of years ago. It's it's not always easy working by yourself and, and sometimes there are some difficult things. And one of the, the times when I found it really difficult, someone actually came in our group and said, you know, I can't leave my house and I'm stuck in bed every day, but I check this group every single day and I love to see what you're all doing. I love my classes. I love that I can practice and I love that you're here for me. And I wouldn't know what to do if you weren't here. And then that just meant everything. It meant absolutely everything to me because if this isn't mine, it's everyone's. So everyone that's in our community and part of it and joining in, this is theirs. This is their classes and their community. It's not mine. It's not my business. And that's what is so important to me is that people love this just as much as I do. And that's that's always going to be the most important thing to me. And, and the day that people stop loving it, I guess, is the day that we stop being here. It means a lot to me that people really do care about it because it's, it's, not, it's not just about me. Like I said, it's, it's about having helping everyone to feel confident and I guess there's a lot of people in our community that don't realize that and don't actually join in with that aspect and and that's okay as well but I know that the people who do and who do use that it can mean a lot so Mm -hmm. yeah that's why it's so special and now you offer a wide range of the online classes from the alcohol markers to pencils, monthly classes and techniques. Can you give our listeners a little breakdown of each one and the benefits Kit and Clowder offers, you know, to their members if they've never joined a class, if they've never heard of Kit and Clowder before? Absolutely. So, I guess we've got a few different classes. 
and um, it can be a little bit confusing if, if you're not quite sure what they're about. So we've got two main types of classes. So we've got technique classes and monthly classes. So technique classes, I refer to them almost like reference encyclopedias. So they are massive. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're jam-packed. So we've got tons of techniques, videos, there's step-by-step -step booklets, there's guides, there's everything in there. And basically how we break these down is by topic, rather than your skill level. So you could do the nature class or the skin and hair class and you're really going to have everything you need to go from beginner right through to advanced on that topic. And what's important with that is you get to control how fast or slow you learn based on what you're comfortable doing, whether you apply the techniques to your class images or the private images that you just have in your stash as well. So you, you're actually learning not only just how to color, but why? And we always teach using art fundamentals as well. You're not just learning my personal style. We're breaking everything right back to color theory, to light source, those fundamentals of art to help you learn, which then gives you the confidence to start applying your own style to. So it's very important because we do have a lot of people out there in the art and craft community that don't understand that classes aren't telling you you, know, you must colour like this and you must colour in someone's style. They're about showing you that there's fundamentals that are going to help you improve upon your technique no matter what skill level you're at. And that's what these classes are about. And they also come with, I guess, our one-on-one -on -one private tutoring so that we can work together. So you're not just getting a whole bunch of information dumped on you. You're getting that work together, that, that feedback and that private one-on-one -on -one help that we can help you feel most confident. And I guess another thing as well with these classes that I would mention to anyone who's listening, who's thinking about it or who has one and maybe hasn't finished, they're not classes that need to be done front to back to learn a lot. So there's a lot of reference guides that are out there that you can learn a lot from. And I guess this class would be more like that in that you can control how much you learn and there's a lot of information there available to you. And then our monthly classes are basically just like how you would go to a store and do a finished project. So we're just working together to create a whole scene. You're learning tons of techniques for all different images. And these are what help you to really grow every month because you're going outside of your comfort zone and you're putting together little techniques, learning about color, learning about composition. And this is how you're going to improve the most, no matter if you're beginner or advanced. So all of our classes, you can be any skill level and join in with anyone. Everything is broken right down to basics. You don't need to be an advanced colorist to jump in with a monthly class or jump in with a technique class. You know, I have to say, um, you know, with the, the big scenes, the first class that I, I did, which was that the little ice cave, the ice princess one, I was scared out of my mind because the really <laughs> cool part is, is, you know, you, you and you don't realize that when you're looking at your pictures and stuff online is you really have that one image that you you get and you put on your paper and you print it out but the background's all you you know whether it's the curtains you know with with the window and the light yeah. coming through or that beach scene and i have to say i i think that's that was so cool because that scene was something that was just like okay i'm putting that ink down i'm putting down you know doing the waves i'm doing the sky and the clouds and the sand and it's like, I, there's nothing I could do wrong <laughs> because <it's, laughs> I just put color it's all down. all experimenting. Yeah. yeah. And it really, I mean, it boosted my confidence level. So when I went to the image because I started the background first because I was like, okay, I, 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 could, I could do this. I can, I can. <laughs> but it was, yeah. it was really liberating because I was, I was just, it was very relaxing. It was very therapeutic. It was, you know, I had my little Zen moment. And I'm just putting down that blue and then the brown and I'm just adding stuff in. It's like, oh, there needs to be a little mound there or, ooh, I messed that up. <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to put something else right there. So it, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it really was fabulous. I, I really enjoyed the background scenes instead of just coloring, whether it's like just a little a critter. Yeah. Or a yeah. person or something. It really kind of fills in the entire page and it, and it yeah. really just kind of. It, it, it boosted my confidence level a lot more. So when I went to my little my little beach girl, it was like, okay, 
I, can, I, I, I got this. I got this now, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've got that sense of achievement because you've created something that you didn't think you could do. Yes. And that's, I think, what's important about these classes is, especially the monthly classes, because like you mentioned before, it's a whole scene and it can look scary. And often it looks outside of what our achievement level, what we perceive we can achieve. Mm-hmm. It looks beyond that. And I guess one of the things that Kid and Cloud are that I probably struggle with it's getting everyone to believe in themselves that they can do this. Because when we sit down and we've got the image there, we can think, oh my gosh, there is no way I can do this. But it's about breaking it down. Don't look at it as a scene. Look at it as, okay, I'm going to do the sky here. I'm mm-hmm. not worrying about it as a finished image. I'm just going to do the sky. And with classes, with our classes, you're not aiming to be perfect. A class should be about learning and experimenting and making those mistakes because you can just keep practicing. That's how we learn. The only time we ever fail is when we never have a go because then we never have achievements to be had. We have nowhere to progress and we've just put it aside in the too hard basket, which means that we're never going to be able to achieve that. But if you actually sit down break it down, go through. Everything's broken down so easily when you actually watch it. So once you start, it's so much easier than you think it's going to be. And then when you actually break down and work through it, you feel a lot more confident because you're achieving what you never thought you could do. And then if you get stuck, you know I'm right here as well. So that's, I guess, what I wanted to do with the beauty of it is, is that you're not alone when you do this. So if it is hard, Just reach out and just keep going because you're going to make a piece that you've learned a lot on even if you still have practice to still go forward. Now, if someone had never picked up a Copic uh, like myself um, (laughs) or a colored pencil for that matter, which I still haven't done, um, I have them. (laughs) Pencils are fun. They're a little bit different, but they are fun. I'm I'm really looking forward to the pencil one because I had to do both. I can't just do markers. You know, what if if I was terrible with the Copic? So I, I did do the pencils and... I did buy them. I just haven't done the class yet. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of people do that. They've got pencils because it's got to have every color and everything. But then they sit in the drawer because they're quite different to how to use or or vice versa. Someone might have pencils and then the markers sit in the drawer because they were too hard to sort of learn. So that's why it's important to get them out. Let's learn with them. But which class would you recommend someone to start with? If they were, you know, very beginner, this is what I want to do, I'm going to jump on in, which one would you recommend that they do first? We do have a free class on our website that's called Marcus 101. So this is a class I made when we reached 10,000 members, just as a thank you to everyone. And it's all your fundamentals. So it's everything broken down really nice and easily. It's light source, shading, blending, color theory, and all of that. That's a really good starting point for all of the absolute basics that you're going to learn in a very comprehensive way rather than doing a ton of different YouTube tutorials where it's confusing and you're learning from all different people. That's a really good one just to start with for free. But if you do want to jump in and really start learning and progressing on all different images, you can basically start at any point. So I always make sure that the classes are nice and simple, that we go back to the very basics of blending, shading, and light source in every class we do. So that was really important to me that we didn't do a class where I I think as people we tend to undervalue our skills. So we go, okay, yeah, I'm probably a beginner. But then when they start, they're like, this is really beginner and I'm actually a little bit more advanced than that. So I wanted to give you the topics that you can choose what you most want to learn and then work from there to over all the different skill levels. So rather than just give you a beginners, intermediate and advanced class, you can just pick, for example, say elements of nature and learn about nature no matter what skill level you're at and start from those basics and keep working back up. So all of our classes like that, even the monthly ones, are all broken down nice and easily. But in saying that, probably our nature and our skin and hair and our monthly classes are our most popular ones for starting with. Now, we do a fun part of our show, which is our fun facts segment, where we get your favorites. So, Miss Elise, what is your favorite aspect of Kit and Clowder? And definitely the community aspect and how everyone supports not only me, but each other. And then what is your favorite coloring medium to use? I don't know. <laughs> um, 
it used to be Copic. They used to be 100% my favorite. But since I've learned pencils and that sort of come up, I really like that you can play a lot with color there. So it's, I guess there's a little bit more room to play. I don't know. That's a hard one. I like them both. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so, so this one might be just as hard, but what is your all-time favorite monthly coloring class? Oh, no. <laughs> um, gosh, I like, I love fantasy images and I know they're not to everyone's taste. So we always try and do a big range of images. So you learn all different things every month, but there's something just really nice about a fairy and dragon or mermaid or something like that. I'd probably pick, I think it was last year, February, February last year when we did a Molly Harrison image and she just does the most beautiful fantasy images and it's a big dragon and a fairy wings and I remember all that one it had all yeah. the bright colors oh my gosh yeah, yeah that was beautiful and the background's really fun because you're just like getting inky and putting ink everywhere and there's not really a wrong way to do that and I saw a lot of people that were like I'm so nervous it's gonna look terrible and I love when you kind of see that and then you see everyone have a go and they're like I'm so proud of what I've done because I thought this was going to be really hard and it was a challenge, but I've created an art piece and everyone's so proud of themselves. I think that's the best feeling to see people say that. So I'd, I'd probably pick that one, I think. And I have to say this too on, on that note, because this is something that we haven't really talked about, but like I joined a couple years ago and then I stopped because I got super busy with, with my business and I, I didn't read your blog post back then about taking some time for myself. But I stopped and I stopped for a probably, well, shoot, like a good year almost. And I started back up again, but all of my stuff is still there. You know, I still have <laughs> access to yeah. all of my, my classes that I had taken and signed up for. And I went into my little account. And I was like, wow, look at all those classes that I purchased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yet. We're still here. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that makes it nice. I mean, if, if you do, you know, get, get things get crazy or, or, you know, you, you stop for a little bit and you want to pick it back up again. Your stuff is right there. It's 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 not going yeah. anywhere. I can go back and do that dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do anything where you could just pay to have access and then it's gone because I know time's hard for all of us. And even though we know we should be putting time aside, sometimes we just don't. It's like doing your exercise. Sometimes <laughs> we just don't do it. Um, so I think what we've done with our classes is anytime you purchase something, even if it's a monthly class, it's available forever. You can download everything so you can take it with you. That's a really good tip as well. If you find it's hard on time, we've got a lot of members that say they go to work and in their lunch break, they might take 15 minutes of their lunch break and just throw on a video, just listen to it, just watch it. Or they've got their pencils. Maybe they take three pencils to do one part of the outfit. So that they're at work just doing a tiny piece of an image. Mm -hmm. Never feel like you've got to sit down and do everything at once because that can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got everything forever. The feedback's unlimited as well. I'm always here. <laughs> and I love how you do the videos and the printouts. Because I know yes. there was times, um, you know, with the, the, the beach scene and then the ice princess, the ice castle thing. I, I, I love I love looking at the printouts. You know, for me, that was like, wow, this is really cool. And then you have the colors broken out for Copics. And then you also have them um, uh, broken out. It was the, the spectrums, right? Yeah. So we cover pretty much all the major brands mm -hmm. in all of our classes. So it's not just Copics. We definitely do all of them and same with pencils we try and do as many as possible yeah so that was that was really nice and I would I would take you know my, my printout and that's what I would focus on and I was able just to kind of like okay I see it and or you know I didn't have I didn't have one of the colors oh my gosh and it, it, it was killing me it literally was killing me <laughs> even though you're just like you don't Good need excuse. to have all the colors and I'm just like it's not looking right this is exactly I why because I, I don't have the it. BG 0 that's why this is looking bad not me not me I always say in the group you don't need to buy new colors like just swap it out and I'll help you swap them out if you feel stuck and they're like no this is a good excuse to buy more colors I'm like okay sorry exactly, exactly. <laughs> you have permission to spend 
<laughs> but yeah. it was really nice. I, I like how you can do the video because I'm not a big video person mm. every now and again. I know like, a lot of people say that. Yeah. yeah. We, we have that in the group. People just say videos aren't for me. But there's one thing that I do notice as well is a lot of people who've said that they've watched YouTube videos before and haven't really liked learning from them really do find the classes helpful because it's not just me sort of sitting there just coloring. We I always try to break it down into – why we're doing things the way we're doing, not just how we're coloring. So you actually will learn a lot by watching the video. But when I do the booklet, I literally sit there and rewatch the video and write out each instruction and print screen the video. So if you do prefer to learn from a booklet, I haven't just written it. I've actually rewatched the class and written it as I I guess I'm saying it on the screen as well. Mm -hmm. So the booklets are very comprehensive. It's not just like lay color here. It's like lay color here because we're trying to achieve this, which is leading to this. And yeah. so it's, it's, it's all about bringing it back, I guess, not to my style, which is what YouTube is a lot about. It's just someone's style or someone's perception, but it's bringing it back to those art fundamentals, giving you that foundation that you can learn from to then create your own style and your own artwork on your own images. Yeah, I love the fact that I can do both like with, when it comes to hair, which I can do, I could do, I think it's the left side. I think the left side. <laughs> I could do great hair on the left side. As soon as I get to the right side, it's like, what is oh, no. this? It is so funny. But your videos for the hair, it's like, there's just no way. I'm going to go and, and it, I get closer to, oh, I, I'm ridiculous. But you're doing all the flicking and the little tiny flicks and my face gets closer to the screen because I think if my face gets really close, maybe by osmosis. You can absorb it through Exactly. <laughs> It's ridiculous. My husband's like, what are you doing? It's like, shh. And he's like, why are you shushing me? You're looking at a video. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. It's like the same reason why I turn down the radio when I'm lost in the car, okay? Yeah. You know? It's that concentration. Exactly. Hair's difficult. I totally understand, though. I think hair is the number one thing we most want to learn, but the number one trickiest and thing that there is because it's so precise. Mm -hmm. And we also put that pressure on ourselves to know that we don't want one single strand out of place. Right. It's got to be perfect. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. I, I totally understand. <laughs> I think it's, it's hard though because you do see people get a bit discouraged when it doesn't look like the video. And it's, it's just like, just bring it back and we're going to learn every single time you practice. It's going to improve. She's going to get more brushed down and more beautiful every time you practice. That's right. And there's like everybody has a bad hair day every now and again. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's right. I have we got to start like that. Exactly. Then... <laughs> like, like one side of my head is curlier than the other. So I'm just thinking, well, you know. That just sounds like me in normal life, not yeah. just coloring. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's, like... it's like when you use a hair dry, you do one side, then your arm gets tired. So the other side's there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the curling iron, the whole thing. That's how my COVID coloring is with, with, with my hair, people. So <laughs> Yeah, it's realistic. Exactly. <laughs> it is me. <laughs> now, you just unveiled your new website and your yeah. new monthly class. Where can people go to find out more about Kit and Clatter and sign up for one of your classes? So our website's just kitandclouder.com. So everything's all on there. You'll find our monthly class and some of our most popular classes on the homepage. But if you click the shop button, everything's broken down into different mediums. So you'll find your pencil classes, mixed media, marker classes, everything there. Our Facebook group is where our community is, where everyone shares. So we do have a page, but that's just me. As you know, pages are sort of one-sided. Mm -hmm. So you want our Kid and Clouder Facebook group. And we're also on Instagram as well. So I'd love if anyone's uh, listening in, come and share what you're working on. Don't ever be nervous to jump in. Like I mentioned before, it's all about sharing. It's about enjoying our hobbies together and, and just being a part of this together. Comment on other people's work as well as sharing your own and let's start getting each other feeling excited and like we can believe in our own work. I think that's what's important about crafting and coloring. It's it's not just always about what we create. It's about sharing with others and, and being a part of this together. And that's what sees our hobbies grow. It's what sees different companies grow. And it's what sees us being able to do this together for a long time. 
Elise, thank you so much for doing the show with us today. And we will have links to Kitten Clowder, her Facebook group and Instagram account in our show notes at sosuzypodcast.com. And until next time, this is Suzanne, and you have been listening to the So Suzy Podcast. Happy stamping! <laughs>